showtime. Show guys. No. All right, we'll call the regular monthly meeting of the Elza City Council to order Monday, August 21st, 2017 at 7 p.m. All councilors are present. Number two, Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand while we recite the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Item three, rules of order. We follow Robert's rules of order, plus rules and procedures that are adopted at the annual organizational meeting. And at this time, if anyone has a pager or cell phone, I would appreciate it if it would be either silenced or off. <laughs> Item four, adoption of minutes from the following meetings of the Elsa City Council. 7-17-2017, regular monthly meeting. 7-31-2017, special council meeting. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. City Manager's Report. Mr. Cole. Uh, a few quick items. First, uh, on August 29th at 2 o'clock, uh, Ellsworth will be having a uh, celebration of the new fiber optic network uh, that is anchored on one end at the uh, Union River Center for Innovation. Uh, among the speakers is Senator Angus King, uh, also representatives from the state and federal agencies that have helped with this project, so uh, it should be a nice event. Uh, the uh, open access fiber optic network is uh, a three mile fiber line owned by the city, which will be available to internet service providers uh, to provide for more access to internet in the core of the city. Uh, second, uh, there are gonna be a number of paving projects coming up through the end of August and into September. Probably the most notable will be uh, out on the uh, Bayside Road from Beachland down to Whitaker Brook. Also, um, Forest Ab Forest uh, uh, Forest uh, Street will be uh, uh, paved uh, its entire length from the intersection at Dunkin' Donuts down uh, to the Shore Road. Uh, we will uh, also uh, be commencing with construction on a. Uh, uh, stormwater upgrade in that same general area from uh, behind the mill wall down to Leonard Lake. So uh, the uh, contractors uh, will be working closely with the school and other property owners to make, to lessen the inconvenience to drivers during that time. Uh, finally, um, as uh, I believe you all are aware, the new light at the, at Lee Jock Street leading up to the high school uh, the new signal is not operational yet, other than flashing. I've been assured by Maine DOT through its contractors and subcontractors it will be operational by the time school starts and hopefully sooner. I would just advise people if you're going to be using Lee Jock Street to allow for some additional time and also uh, if you're not comfortable turning left, turn right and take alternate routes back to uh, where you need to get. And that's what I have. And, uh, any questions. <clears throat> so we're not to worry about the street light because the state of Maine promised us, right? Yes, right. <laughs> I promised. And I, and I will add that we're in continuous communication with the state, and I've been assured by the state traffic engineer they're going to take care of it. So you're becoming friends, closer friends with them. Mm -hmm. We're in constant contact and chasing the Ingles. Well. Good. <laughs> sending messages with blinking lights. <laughs> Item six, committee reports. Uh, any committees that met this month, uh, councils would bring the, anything back from them. I attended the Harbor Commission meeting. Uh, the Elks Club would like to build or have a gazebo built down at the uh, Harbor Park on the, toward the wastewater end and would fund that. That was one of the major happenings. Gas sales are up, Harbor's been busy, things are, are good. Any other committees? Matt, with news. Pretty quiet. Seeing no takers, then we'll move on to citizen comments. <clears throat> this item on the agenda allows anyone in the audience to speak for a couple of minutes on anything that's not on the agenda for tonight, just to bring it to the council's attention. No takers. Presentation of awards. 
First, we have Christopher Smith, 15 years of service with the Ellsworth Police Department. Come forward, please. Mm -hmm. City of Ellsworth proudly presents the certificate of service to Christopher Smith and the recognition of your 15 years of service as a police officer for the Ellsworth Police Department. Your devotion to duty and loyalty to the community have contributed to the improvement of the City of Ellsworth. Presented this 21st day, August 2017. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jared Grindle, who is not here tonight, for five years of service with the Ellsworth Public Works Department, and that certificate will be given to him. Mickey Sumter, for five years of service with the Ellsworth Economic Development Department. Even though you've only been here theoretically five years, you've been part of an integral part of the city of Washington. City of Ellsworth proudly presents the certificate of service to Mickey Sumter for recognition of the five years of service as economic development director for the City of Ellsworth. Your devotion to duty and loyalty to the community have contributed to the improvement of the City of Ellsworth. Presented this 21st day, August 2017. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for your time served with us. We appreciate you, all your work. <coughs> Item 9, Council Order 071705, request of the wastewater treatment superintendent to purchase a plow truck for the wastewater treatment facility from Darling's Commercial Sales. This item is on here to be removed. The item was rebid and will be back to us in a different form at a later time. Any have a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. Thank you. Consent agenda. First item is on the consent agenda. Council order at 081700. Request of the deputy treasurer tax collector to initiate civil actions in the name of the city of Ellsworth for the purpose of collecting delinquent personal property taxes. Second item. Council order 081701. Request of the deputy treasurer tax collector to accept payments on tax acquired timeshare units per the attached spreadsheet to authorize the city manager to release said properties through municipal quit claim deeds. Item 12, Council Order 081702, request of the Finance Director to write off $740.22 in solid waste charges, interest, and late fees for Maynard Nash, account number 3913. Item 13, Council Order 081703, acceptance of Brett, Brett Alexander's resignation from the Recreation Commission with a term to expire on June 30, 2019. Any member <coughs> of the Council wish to remove any of those from the agenda? Then may I have a motion for the consent agenda, please? Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, the consent agenda be approved as uh, presented. Items 10, 11, 12, and 13. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> item 14, we have two items for licensing. First item, Barb and Kevin Booza doing business as Silver Saint Sanctuary, 33 Birch Avenue for renewal of a city lodging license. I assume all parties of the staff is all happy with both items on the agenda. I saw everything was fine. Nothing has come up. Any questions from council about the request of the Silver Saint Sanctuary? Seeing none, public hearing is now open. Any input from the public on the request of the Silver Saint Sanctuary for renewal? Seeing none, public hearing closed. Council action. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the application of Silver Saints Sanctuary. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Second item is ARG, ARG Incorporated, doing business as Pat's Pizza. 396 High Street for renewal of a city Class C license, victual and alcohol, and renewal of a state malt, spiritus, and vinous Class 1, 2, 3, 4 restaurant liquor license. Questions from council? Seeing none, public hearing is open. Any public input <coughs> from the on the request of Pat's Pizza for renewal of their licenses. Seeing none, public hearing is now closed. Council action. Move approval of ARG Incorporated DBA Pat's Pizza for their licenses. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. 
Item 15, Council Order 081704, request of the Fire Chief to purchase five Scott self-contained breathing apparatus units. Good, morning. Uh, good evening. <laughs> this is uh, an ongoing process that we are, have done for many years of replacing a certain number of air packs uh, per year. We did up this to five this year, as opposed to in past years we've done typically four. The reason for that is last year, if you recall, uh, we ran into a bind with our uh, face pieces, had to be upgraded to high temperature face pieces to coincide with the air packs that we had. We, there was an oversight on our part uh, throughout that process. So we basically traded off one of those four for these masks. Having five this year gets us back into our rotation to to keep the rotation going so they stay up to standard. Any questions of the chief? <coughs> May I have a motion then? Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. move to approve, approve council order number 081704 <coughs> to purchase five Scott self-contained breathing apparatus for $4,855 each from fire tech and safety, totaling $24,275 from the fire department capital outlay budget, 210-54001. Second. One second. Any discussion or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of the chief's request? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Council Order 081705, request to authorize the city manager to approve an agreement with WBRC Architects for Engineering <coughs> Services related to developing a plan for a new public safety building. This has actually been, the public safety building has been discussed countless times in many years. In fact, I was a, only served for a year or two as a council ages ago and there was discussions then of a public safety building and it keeps rearing its head and down and up and we've moved along. So our presentation to the public, I mean, it's stuff that we've talked about internally and in and amongst and we're at a point now, I think it's, we may be moving ahead. Therefore, you can come up with a nice speech that'll soon. <laughs> So as you uh, should be aware of, we've been, uh, our committee has reestablished approximately a little over two years ago to focus back in at, at this point in time. Uh, we've reviewed several different property locations in Ellsworth uh, and have come up with a recommendation uh, that you see in your packet of the high school uh, baseball field. Uh, we are requesting to hire WBRC architect engineering firm uh, because they have uh, done this for us when we were looking at a standalone fire station on the Briney Moore School property. Um, when that deal changed with the uh, uh, Seaport Village coming in there, uh, that kind of took that away, but yet WBRC holds a lot of information for background information at that point as far as the fire service side goes. Uh, we are now looking at a combined public safety building, so we'll reestablish and, and tweak a little bit of the information for the fire service and then do the same uh, process for the police department to, to gain their needs as well as part of that. Uh, can, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, Chief, but for the public, some of the greater reasons which, which we all kind of know internally of why we are headed towards this, at the, at, at, of the building and the, at the, what we have for space issues for you perhaps, and maybe, yep. So early on in this process, this last time, uh, we did an internal review of both departments uh, as to what our spatial uh, needs are compared to what we actually have. Uh, and we have faro grown both facilities, both the fire department and the police department side of things. Um, there's a tremendous amount of new technology uh, in an infrastructure such as a building for both departments as well to bring us into the modern era uh, as far as security goes, as far as storage goes, uh, cleaning, uh, keeping, uh, from our perspective on the fire department side, uh, a couple of interesting <coughs> notes is turn out gear rooms that have negative pressure ventilations to keep the carcinogens off the turn out gear when we return from fires and keep that uh, ventilated outside the building instead of uh, just off gassing within a building. Uh, segregated areas for cleaning the SCBA and taking care of it. 
You know, we, we talk about an SCBA self-contained breathing apparatus as a life-altering device. If it's not functioning properly, somebody's going to uh, be in a world of hurts. Having a dedicated room that's uh, just shy of sterile, uh, to have a good clean room to take care of that equipment and maintain that is very important. And there's several different facets throughout each discipline that that comes into play and is very important. At this point, we don't have the space or the or area to do that. It's crowded or and it's makeshift and done at this it is at this uh, area. For instance, for us to work on the apparatus, uh, typically we have to move the apparatus to open some compartments that are that tight against the walls or the columns and that sort of thing downstairs. Uh, police department doesn't even have a place to keep their vehicles inside, so in the winter time they're keeping them running nonstop so that they can be at the ready when when they need to go. Uh, just it's not an efficient way of running business. As far as personnel, as far as the uh, sleeping quarters and stuff, they're pretty limited. You're limited with that in space at this it, point, too. It is it? pretty limited, and as the city grows and the needs grow for personnel, that's going to become uh, an issue. Uh, we're going to be, if we look at a new building, that's going to be able to be planned for uh, with some growth uh, planned into that and uh, yeah, be able to take care of the needs that we have. Okay. Chief Mosher. The other departments involved with this too, if you could highlight some of the areas that are lacking. I know this, um, I'm not trying to put you on the spot either, but for the public knowledge, and this is a public meeting at this point, and we're being watched, but there was, I've had some questions, but I know that you have a, what, a single single room for the quarters. And yeah. You could. Some of the highlights, please. Well, and I oversee two departments. The police department is my pr primary focus, but also our dispatch services and our dispatch services dispatch for the police department as well as the fire department uh, as well as Trenton Fire Department uh, currently and um, as the city continues to grow and uh, our activities increase the fire department's activities increase uh, more and more the dispatchers are getting tasked uh, to do double duty they're required to uh, service the phones answer the phones uh, run the radios for the police for the fire and they are also currently serving as sort of our receptionist uh, they field all of my phone calls throughout the course of the day and uh, so they're extremely busy uh, we have no room for expansion for our dispatch we currently have a space for one dispatcher and one dispatcher only um, so as we look towards the future a need for that expansion and for uh, potentially multiple dispatchers down the road to just handle this, the workload um, over the course of the day uh, you walk through there and there may be two or three phone lines lit up and she's talking to officers on the radio and, and it's, a, it's a difficult place and difficult environment for them to work in. Uh, they have no ability to leave uh, when there's only one of them working. So if they have to use the restroom or, or you know, walk, step away to get something to eat, they have to have an officer someone to cover the desk if someone's there for them because there's no room there for them to have uh, any sorts of facilities or anything right there in close proximity. Uh, in the police department, uh, currently we have three female patrol officers as well as a female detective and then uh, eight uh, other, uh, actually ten other patrol officers who <laughs> will all work in the same area. Uh, they all share a common bathroom. Uh, we have one locker room uh, for both uh, sexes, male and female. Um, our command staff, our sergeants and uh, lieutenant currently all share one office space. Um, which is difficult when one, more than one is working at a time. Uh, the, the, the office space has actually been converted. It was our locker room for a, top, for a time. Originally it was our break room and kitchen area, but as we've expanded, we've just kind of filled into all of the areas that we have um, to, to be able to accommodate space for our, for our officers and for our command staff. Uh, supervisors need space where they can uh, counsel officers, where they can do you know paperwork that has a um, you know that that can be viewed by the other officers um, so it has you know some some level of security that they need they uh, and we just don't have that in the squad room which is why we have the separate office space for them um, our detectives office uh, is overrun with uh, gear that she she uses and that our other officers use for investigations for doing investigations types of uh, uh, kits that for fingerprinting and other sorts of investigative needs uh, so her office is cramped our uh, evidence locker um, which which we've uh, recently since I took over as chief have cleaned out and got rid of a lot of the old uh, outdated evidence that we no longer need to store but still that area is very very small our officers are forced to eat 
in the same you know desk where they minutes ago may have been processing evidence of a crime or they may be you know processing drug evidence and all sorts of things because um, we have no secluded area for them to get away from their workstations uh, when they're not out on the road in their patrol cars so cramped quarters and uh, pretty difficult to do your odds and ends coming that it, it makes it challenging and certainly as we you know look again towards the future with you know the potential down the road for additional staff it, it, it you know we're already overcrowded you walk through our hallways and we've got boxes stacked out in the hallways which uh, is not uh, is a violation of, of all sorts of different fire codes among other things um, so it's it's definitely definitely a cramped space for us and then and then that doesn't address the you know the overall issue of the safety and security of the city hall and you know the many of the people that come into our lobby and come in to see the police um, you know they're in a bad situation they're you know they're in a, in a bad place they may have um, you know not too long ago I had a gentleman walk into the lobby and uh, during the middle of the day business hours walked into the lobby and I came out to greet him he, he pulled a handgun out of his pocket and handed it to me and um, and he had made statements that that uh, he saw me out in the parking lot and he was going to draw the weapon on me out in the parking lot so that I would shoot him and you know when you have those type of scenarios unfolding right here in City Hall where the general public is coming to do all sorts of other business uh, it's not safe and um, you know we have we have the tax pe ladies yep. who are working out front receptionists and it's uh, this and a safety issue definitely Mr. Chief Mulcher and now that is changing with time still and and so along with the safety issue you've got the parking um, you know issues you know we often have people complaining about our, our police cars out here and taking up parking spaces and yep. along with those police cars the <coughs> officers uh, you know own personal vehicles are here parked around City Hall um, so it's just made for it makes for you know a difficult situation on a whole bunch of different levels yep. I appreciate it I'd like to at this point with uh, and you two I'm sure have some more questions ask the council for input and questions uh, while we've got the chiefs here anything else I, 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 I have one that um, Chief Mosier touched on but Chief Tupper didn't and you've been fortunate enough and I don't say that in any negative you haven't been forced to make a decision on a female engineer where are you going to house them downstairs um, because there are some really good female firefighters out there that uh, you've got no place downstairs to segregate. You're, you're absolutely correct. We've had female firefighters in the past. We have some that have uh, applied applications for the paid on call membership right now that could have uh, good potential for the future. Uh, and that certainly is uh, a piece of that equation that we'd have to address as yep. well. And that would be extremely difficult here. Mr. Moore. You know, another factor, and you kind of alluded to it, is that there's an increase uh, in population growth in the city. And you add that to the, to the fact that the mission of our providers of public safety has evolved into something much larger over the last 15 or 20 years. And that's only going to increase. I, I made a comment last week after we discussed this at finance and it's prima facie evidence that the city of Ellsworth has known for a number of years that we're going to have to increase our fire service membership and the two biggest most expensive objects of that are those two ladder truck and engine two downstairs where we put four man cabs on because we knew by the time we got into the middle of their useless life run that that's where we were going to be and uh, it continues to be difficult if not impossible to meet your staffing needs with the paid on call because of their responsibility to their employers when my family was in it decades ago we'd close the shop and go to a fire well you don't do that now so um, I think it's long overdue to at least design a station understand what we need and then sell it to the public who has to uh, agree to bond it. Um, we need to get there, and this is the first, first logical step to I see what it's going to cost. Yeah, this is one of the one of the first steps in it. But also in doing that, I, I just want to be sure that the public has a chance to hear 
that there were, there were some of the reasons behind our decision to get to this point. I think that's an important part of this meeting. Sure is. Any other questions from council? It's not a question, but it's a statement. Uh, actually, this motion tonight just gets us back to the level, same level we were um, before we stopped looking at this public safety building before, and the um, and the property at the Moore School was mm -hmm. taken up. Yeah. Um, we had already had a plan, and one of the things we have is the money from uh, or for this work was actually part of the sale of that property. So I believe that there's $70,000 that we put aside from the sale of that property to do this when we got to the point where we wanted to do it. It has not been looked at lightly. We've taken two years to look at every possible scenario we can to answer as many questions as we possibly can. We get to do this only once, probably in the next 50 years plus. The present facility has been working for almost 80 years. And we re rehabbed it in 99, figuring it was going to be good for 10 years. We're now 17 years. It's time to at least <coughs> look at it and develop a plan for it. Blanchett? I agree. I've been on the uh, this committee for the last uh, two plus years and the needs certainly are there. One uh, things that haven't been mentioned tonight are the increased requirements in training. Sometimes there just isn't the room downstairs uh, to be doing this the, the, because of the equipment that has taken up that space. New equipment, which is bigger equipment, it takes up a whole lot more floor space. And we don't have it. The equipment that is now required by different standards, the National Fire uh, uh, Protection, uh, the National Police, uh, insurance mandates, state mandates, federal mandates, that we have to have all of this equipment, it has to be stored someplace. For that reason, I think this building is necessary. And where this is uh, well, one point as it moves along, I'm sure that there are some folks in the audience may have some questions uh, if on where we are or on the thoughts of this. And if you do, I would welcome a, let allow you a, a little bit of time, but you must come to the podium and state your name. If you've got questions of what we're doing or, or inputs on this, I'd appreciate hearing from the council would at this time. You want to speak yep, one at a time? Please take the podium, see you, and ju just tell us your name. And my name is Christopher yeah. Barnes. Yes, sir. Um, I guess my question would be, is there a baseline cost as far as what this building will cost? To the best of my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, we have no idea at this point, nothing in any paperwork that I've seen gives a, a, a dollar amount of the cost of the building. Okay. Um, another question I have is, uh, what is our current bond debt standing, and what, how many uh, actual property tax owners are there now for payers, property taxpayers? How many taxpayers? I want to know how many property taxpayers there are in Ellsworth. I that's combined. I'm not sure I can. Do, you, homes. do we have any? Yeah, yeah sure. Some I love an estimate. Tammy, she may be able to tell you the uh, mm -hmm. bond amount. So I believe that we just sent out about 9,500 tax bills. Yeah, so, 9,500. Okay. Um, and then our bond rating um, through Standard and Poor's, it's uh, AA minus, and through Moody's, it's a AA3. Okay, so, so what's the amount that the current? Oh, the amount actually, do we have that amount? Ballpark. It's 47 million. 47 is the ballpark. Million, yeah. However, it's broken between school, water, wastewater. Yep. The city alone is $10 million. Um, the school department is. 25 million state support. but that is um yep. state state support. Support. correct state. so we get reimbursed so by approximately the city 47 for million total correct. that's amongst 47.
school department and the sewer department and all. Yes. And sewer and water, if they have indebtedness or an enterprise funds, they pay for themselves. The school department is, is funded through the state in a backwards mm -hmm. way, but it still would appear to be debt. But our uh, city particular city debt, debt is, is important. 10 million. Around 10 million. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. If yeah, I, hope, could, I hope they answer some questions, seriously. Thank, thank you. you. If I could, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, in, in answer to Mr. Barnes, the, the reason we don't have a, a baseline number or figure on this is we've been talking for two over two years for uh, how, how many departments are going in there? Are we actually, uh, at one time we were talking about uh, trying to get the uh, county to come in yep. uh, with the RCC and so on. So in the meantime, the chiefs have been traveling uh, the state looking at a lot of facilities and the newer ones that have been built in different places, north and south. And those prices and, and sizes are really a, a wide range. So we got a lot of stuff to look at and to choose from, but to come down to a, any kind of a firm figure at this point, we're not, uh, we're not that far along yet, but we've, they've done an awful lot of research. So. Mr. Cole? Well, and that's just the very point. Uh, one of the key objectives of this effort is to figure out what it would cost. Yeah. And we're just starting that process. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience would like to speak? Please drop put the, the podium and your name, please. And Hello, my name is Jason Carter. Uh, hearing a lot about this being somebody that lives in the community, been here a long time. I don't think the ball field is the place to put it. Uh, as Chief Moja mentioned, safety issue. You have a high school sitting right there. You have the middle school directly across the road. Uh, then you have the issue of trying to replace the ball field. Uh, we also know what's underneath it, which is all ledge, a bunch of granite. And it's just something that shouldn't be. Uh, I don't know if something else has been thought of as far as just maybe moving the fire department. Move the police station downstairs. There's your garage. There's your room. You can add more offices. That would cut the cost down for the new building tremendously. Uh, but I think the location is absolutely terrible, and I think you can have a hard time selling the public on that. So I so. appreciate it, but they, uh, I guess the, the superintendent and the school department has been involved with that in, in purchasing the property and using that. The actual thought from the superintendent was he thought it was a good idea to have the police department nearby both schools and that apparently there was some place out back to put the fields in that was felt to be a, a not a bad spot to build and maybe cheaper than purchasing property. That's how we got to that point. Well, I understand. Whether it's going to be I mean, bad, just as regular, just see that. I mean, that's yeah. a whole additional cost on top of building the building on, you know, to well, start with. Either that or buying property, the one so that we've got embedded cost of that, which we're going to have to try which to I'm figure out. Which I'm as far as the Collier building, when that was purchased in order to keep the nursing home here. What happened to that building? I thought the idea was to move offices there, get something established in that building. So. It's it. We're at a discussion. Thank you very Thank much you. for your input. Thanks for coming and thanks for letting us hear you. Yes, sir. Uh, my name's Joel Horn. Um, I just, I moved to this area in 2003. Um, and roughly in the amount of time I've lived here, we've seen property taxes go up 62% on average. Um, with a population increase of that same period of 19%. So we're spending our money three times as fast as we're growing. Uh, not that I don't think anybody here thinks that not having a police force or a fire department is a bad idea, but at some point, the spending, we have to say no, you know. Um, I just don't understand how we've seen 2004, my taxes are, you know, 1600 bucks. They went down this year um, with the $20,000 homestead exemption. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, they've increased substantially every year. Another 14 to $20 million is another substantial expense. It would be. No, I don't, I understand this as far as the tax <laughs> liability goes and that we need to be cognizant of that and we are trying to be cognizant of that uh, but it unfortunately different things have put a drain on how we and we are we're limited to how we can fund our departments through property tax and we have tried to be cognizant of that 
that the fire department has grown as, as uh, councils have brought up are on call <coughs> and, and a certain amount need to be at a fire and the on call is is now not as dependable as it was so we've ended up hiring more people to have to answer it it's a liability and a safety issue for the men and the same and the police as you know the world has changed so we've had more police on duty and they need two people at times and maybe three it's not the same world that you and i had 10 15 years ago and it's cost us more to do it well it, you know like the police chief said that having it here is a safety concern for the adults well how is it not a safety concern to have it near our children yeah. you know um, that would be more of a concern than the adults yeah. to me um, you know we just spent what five six million dollars on the on the Moore school um, we can't house officers or or you know firemen there um, rather than you know a dollar 25 year lease for the Y I appreciate your comments and your thoughts. I seriously do. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Anyone else in the audience? Uh, yes, Ken Shea. I'd just like to uh, reiterate what some of these folks has, have already repeated. Why would we be destroying a four acre ball field? which was constructed at a considerable expense, uh, I admit, 25 years ago, to put a public safety building there. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, I was on the original building committee when we selected that site. One of the reasons the ball field was placed there is because it was a reasonably level site. The refusal was fairly shallow, and a baseball field obviously required a very large, relatively flat area. The area behind that school, which is where you would have to put a, a baseball field, is going to be terribly expensive to build on. Uh, there's a reason they put the water tower up there uh, 60 or 70 years ago. It was the highest point in the immediate area around town. That area is, uh, has all shallow refusals. Your soils are glacial tills. It's going to be a very expensive area to put a drain ball field in. You imagine taking four acres up in behind that existing school and constructing a ball field. One of the reasons the softball field was relatively economical to build back in 92 and 93 was there was a tremendous amount of earth and blasted leads that had to come out of the area currently occupied by the building. You're not going to have that available when you construct a new baseball field. <coughs> and a baseball field is approximately twice the size of a softball field. Uh, currently, you have good parking for your tennis courts and your uh, baseball field there. That's going to be, and there's no parking at the softball field. I mean, there was a uh, tournament game now last spring. I went to it. People were parking down by the school. It, uh, it's a fairly decent track up over that hill. It's a terrible location to put a baseball field. Uh, it's just not going to be economical. It's, you're going to be astounded what it costs to build that field up there. And I guess I'm a little disappointed in the council. If you've been studying this for several years, why did you let the Moore School property go, and why did you convert the uh, Knowles School property into a park? Those would have been far more economically <coughs> developable than trying to uh, destroy a baseball field and uh, construct a new one. Uh, up and behind. <coughs> I've got to say, you folks uh, did not do a particularly good job in uh, looking forward. If you knew you were going to have to have a public safety building, and you let two pieces of property within a quarter of a mile, the city hall be developed for other purposes. Uh, I'm also concerned about the $47 million in uh, debt that this town owns. Property taxes in Ellsworth, well as other towns in Hancock County, are very high. Uh, I just got a tax bill for land Steve and I own in... Uh, Hancock and the mill rate was $11, mm -hmm. and here it's uh, roughly 18 I mean, all of these communities now are supposed to be on pretty much full valuation. Uh, I would guess Ellsworth must have the highest mill rate in Hancock County. Uh, it, I know all of the towns on the island are much lower. Bucksport, I'm not sure right. about. But, so uh, Mr. Shea, you know why uh, the towns on the island are much lower, because <laughs> the values are so much higher. That they are. And, but Ellsworth Elf also has some uh, properties that generate a lot of tax revenue at very little cost to the city. I mean, you've got a lot of property on Branch Lake, Green Lake, Batten's Pond. 
Uh, you spot increased the value of all that property last year. Yeah, you kept the mill rate the same. But my taxes went up on the property I own in Green Lake because you increased the value of it. And I did nothing to the property. Yeah. The wild land that we own also went up in, uh, in value. Now, while, why wild land would increase in value? You have a great deal of difficulty now in marketing softwood. I have no idea. But you did keep the tax rate steady, but you did increase value on lake frontage and wild land. Uh, not uh, coincidentally, those two parcels have very few voters per, uh, per acre. I, uh, well, I, I would be very opposed to you uh, using that baseball field. I also wonder why there hasn't been more work done with the county on trying to share dispatching services. There has been discussions. Uh, that has been ongoing for several yeah. years before Mr. Mosher was here. There were discussions prior to and prior administrations. Mm -hmm. We had discussions back when I was first on the council trying to share that. Well, we did it, it when I was the county commission. It just doesn't seem to go sometimes. Yeah. So and it's not. There would, there would be an yet. opportunity there for some cooperation between two branches of the government that are located 300 feet apart. <coughs> to that share has been some explored services. and is being explored. Well, it's please not a dead that. issue. Anyway, I, uh, and I'm very opposed to taking any property that currently is being used for uh, education and using it for public safety. Right? I still believe that the most important function right. of local government is your educational system, and you're going to compromise the ability to provide a quality education for our kids by using that well. land for public safety. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shea. <coughs> Anyone else? And my name is Stephen Shea, and of course I'm going to tell you that I agree with everything my brother just said. <laughs> okay. And would reiterate that if he makes good points. One question I have is, what is the exact motion that you're considering Tonight. The exact what? What's right the there. exact motion that you're considering? The, the motion? Motion's right there, Steve. Public coffee. Yeah. Most of us all authorized WBRC architects for engineering services related to developing a plan for a new public safety building. Okay. How did you select WBRC? They have been involved with it from the first, uh, uh, God, first concept for several years. They have a bunch of the information now. We've been working with them or worked with them on the first time. So, Did you? And they have experience in that, as I've been told. Uh, well, um, there's many firms in the state that have experience in that, yep. and I guess that's my point. Did you vote for... I mean, I know you've been talking about this for a while, but it seems like you almost got to look at this as a de novo project. And my question is, why haven't you, or maybe you have, uh, gotten proposals from other firms? I guess at this point, I don't know if we did at the initial, which I almost feel we did initially, and then ended up with WBRC in the end. Yeah, we have, we did. That's what well, I did. Yeah. Did you, Mr. And then, uh, John, were, I, I was on the initial one. You yes, want me to fill it in? Yes, if you can remember the details. We, we went out for proposals on the first time to mm -hmm. design in the middle of uh, where Seaport Village is now. Mm -hmm. Had uh, interviews That's and right. discussion with the uh, people. The committee chose WBRC. They were pegged this time because it's an extension of that same contract. Well, possibly. I, I, well, I, I, that's the way we're treating it. I don't, I don't call that good business myself. I mean, it's been a long time. I, I think that should be revisited. But anyway, uh, is there a... Now, it almost sounds like you're hiring them to design a facility. Now that would suggest that you have selected a site. Is this well, at this point in the meeting, as you know, this is the site proposal was that is, is the preferred site by the committee. So, well, is this definitely going to happen? No, nothing says well, it's no, definitely going to happen. Is that design going to be direction. based Just on this site? Pardon me. Is the design that they're going to propose is that going to be based on a specific site, a specific site being the ball field. 
It's an interesting question. I mean, it seems to me. It's going to be. Yeah, at this well, point, it would be for that. that question, but then again, it, it would be a general design overall, which I couldn't see for other than bulk and space being transferred to another uh, area. If you need five acres of land and you have a building that works on that five acres of land, you get another five acres of land, that thing would more than likely fit with very little change. Well, <laughs> I guess I'd have to disagree. And well, I've got okay. some experience in that I, field. That's but, fine. But uh, it seems to me you're getting a cat before the horse. Yep. And I'm not going to argue that you may need new facilities for both the police and the fire department. But I've been around this town long enough to know, and I'm fairly familiar with it, and I'm fairly familiar with construction, that there are a lot of alternative ways to do this, okay. and we need to be looking at them, and we need to be looking at doing them economically, because the tax rate in this town, as you know, is high. You can pass words, make excuses about us not having the property in the island, but the tax rate is high. The last 10 years, you people have spent a tremendous amount of money on PACs, the thing up there at the old Moore School. And if we're going to do this, we need to do it in the most economically way possible. And to go out and hire an architectural firm at this point in time to design a facility that includes both the police department mm -hmm. and the fire department in one building seems to me to be premature. I appreciate your input. Mr. Blanchett, do you have a comment? Oh, if I recall, uh, Mr. Shea, one of the reasons uh, with WBRC, we had looked at some other, uh, other architects mm -hmm. in southern Maine, and the travel expenses for them that they would have charged us every time they came up here, uh, time and mileage was exorbitant. It, it certainly would have added a lot of money to the cost. Well, there are other firms in Eastern Maine. There's and no possibly doubt. There's plenty of firms firm, out there. Possibly you need a firm to do a feasibility study to determine just what kind of facility you need and to develop the alternatives. Okay. I think it's premature to go out and, and design a building that automatically puts the police and the fire department under one roof. Uh, somebody raised the question here tonight. What are you going to do with the space the fire department's in now? going to hire more economic development people? I think that's probably enough. No, I don't think we have any plans to hire any more staff here than is necessary. We don't go out and hire staff just on a whim. Well, We try I to guess, be efficient and take care of it and do the best we possibly I can. I guess the, the test space is going to be available for something. It seems to me mm -hmm. yep. it would be available for a police department. Yep. Issue. That should be, and I'm not saying yes, that's the case, but it seems to me that alternatives should right. be explored before we spend money because once you spend money okay. and design a facility you're spiking the job you're going down yeah. that road and you're not going to be able to turn around i appreciate your input we've heard it with that I i'm sure you do thank you as it is thank you steve oh well, the other thing i'd like to say is you've been talking about this for a long time long time why wasn't it in the current budget this money. Why are you coming this, after the this budget? Money, this money was already set aside from prior budgets. Was it budgeted? Particular. Yes, it has. Okay, it's it was budgeted. actually budgeted. So it's been carried forward. It's been in so there. It's been in there since uh, I don't know how what time sure. period. Several okay. years. Designated. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Mr. No. Chair, just want yes, to sir. clear up one point. As part of this process early on, the uh, practicability of going moving the ball field has to be looked at to ensure there is no fatal flaw with that. But to finish this work product, it does have to be site specific. You're correct. But before that, it's going to have to be determined is uh, the practicability of uh, moving the ball field will be looked at. And if there are issues, then uh, while it, we call this the preferred alternative, it's not, you know, cast in stone. Thank you, Mr. Cole. All right, councils, we've heard some input from the public. We've discussed it amongst ourselves. Mr. Fordia. Well, my opinion is I, I appreciate all the comments, and we'll have more of these sessions once we get over this step. 
but this is money that was, specific, was specifically put aside for the next step when we sold the Moore Community Center. This is reimbursement for design that we'd already done. Um, I'd like to see, I've been talking for years that we should be partnering with Hancock County to get a new, uh, safe, top of the line dispatch center in a safe place. Um, I've been talking for years that uh, we should look at bringing into the fold EMS. That's a way to, to staff your fire service with a few more. It's a money maker. We've got people that are working on that, whether it's something Ellsworth should do or not. Um, because God help us if tomorrow the local ambulance service closes. What are we going to do? We've, we've got to have that plan. So we have been talking about it. And uh, as far as the taxes go, uh, we all pay them. I agree they're high. But just a tidbit from last year, out of all the service center communities in the state of Maine, which is a designation by the state, um, Ellsworth had the second lowest tax rate in service center communities. Bar Harbor was the lowest. So it's not just Ellsworth. And I sit on the Maine Municipal Association, and every time they cut revenue sharing, it costs you taxpayers and me. Um, so it hasn't just been us spending more. It's a little bit of that, I agree, 100%. But a lot of it is reduction in revenue from the state that they've taken away year by year by year for important things. So um, I've listened. I'm not sold that we need a $20 million public safety million, but I think this is a, an appropriate step to give us that information so we can make up our minds and the public will have their answers that we can't answer you tonight on until you get a concept plan. This isn't a full-blown set of architecturals. This is concept. What space does a fire need? What space do the am ambulance need if they come along? What does our, our law enforcement need for secure space? So that's more than this seven-member council has the ability to do that. So this is only for a concept plan. Anybody else? I think you have a question out in the audience. Well, I just we're well, done. We're, no, we're done. Oh, we're going to put it on. Thank you. You can ask us late afterwards. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, if you'd like to go ahead, I would need a motion. Mr. Chairman. I, I have a yes, question. Sir. If we uh, vote to approve this, Are we going to have some kind of wiggle room, <laughs> wiggle room, <laughs> uh, in terms of exactly how they're going to approach this problem? Is it, in other words, is it definitely going to be site specific, or can we kind of look around at at uh, other possibilities? I'm not sure. That with the contract, I would assume that might be one of the first things that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. that, that would as be in, as Mr. Cole said, that the ball field can be done and the site can be used. And as Mr. Shea said, we'd be sure that the tons of ledge below are, are going to work. So I would assume that with this contract, one of the first hurdles would be that it would work in this site. And I, and I would Mr. add, if it doesn't work at this site, then we need this kind of uh, technical help in scouting out new sites. Yes, so, Councilman. So approving this doesn't say we're going to put it on that site. If we approve this and we have discussions and have assistance looking at the relocation of the field, whether it's feasible or not feasible, um, that could change before we enacted this if it was necessary. We would act or act on it or let it go any further. We can limit it and stop it. I would like that could be part of the contract and should be part of the contract. Yes. If that's what we need to do. Whatever agreement and contract that you enter into with them as the managers of, is allowed so this to is the sign, con this is a would be, that be our initial part of it and be, be a definite before we move ahead and, and go any further. 
So it's a concept plan in full. It's not just yeah. design of a building, but we're, we're, it's a concept plan in, in, in still yeah. moving forward, but figuring out the best way to do it, whether it's at the ball field or not at the ball field. Yeah. It makes, seems to make sense. Any other questions? So, would anyone like to present a motion? One way or another. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I move to authorize the city manager to enter into an agreement with WBSC Architects for pro professional engineering services related to developing concept plans for a new public safety building and authorize the finance director to withdraw $70,000 from the fire department reserve account. Second. Any further discussions? All those in favor? Unanimous. I want to thank everyone for coming. And seriously, the input is important, and it does enter into the discussions and the thought process. While they exit, can we take a five minute break? Yeah, we have to delay a game. Or maybe a six minute break. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jason, why? you still interested in doing air quality now and then? Move right along. <laughs> Item 17, public hearing and action on Council Order 081706, author, order authorizing the issuance of up to $1,180,000 of the city's general obligation bonds to finance miscellaneous road and parking lot improvements and other capital projects. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I am seeking authorizations to borrow $1.18 million. Uh, just, this is just the authorization. This is, um, I will come back to you when uh, I'd like to award um, for a bond anticipation or, or the bond. Um, there's five different projects. Uh, the first one is a State Street drainage reconstruction, repair, and upgrade. Um, this project consists of upgrading the drainage from State Street um, through Forest Avenue and the Mill <coughs> Mall and uh, EEMS. Uh, Manager Cole has a lot more information on that project. Um, the City Council approved last month uh, that for Ranger contracting in the amount of $700,000. Uh, we'll probably only be borrowing about $400,000 of this amount because the state is going to be giving us $300,000 uh, $300, <laughs> for the project. <laughs> um, but at the time when, when these orders had to be written up, I had to have an amount. 
Um, the second project is the Bayside Road reconstruction. This includes grinding, reclaiming the existing pavement, or uh, repairing this, that area from Whitaker Brook all the way to uh, the Beachland Road. Um, the council's already approved this project and was part of the link contract that was presented last month. This project's going to be roughly $120,000. The third project is the harbor fuel tanks. This is the replacement of the antiquated fuel tanks, uh, the fuel system. Um, it includes moving the tanks uh, to meet some code requirements. This would also allow for diesel and gasoline, which has been a request from commercial and recreational boaters. Um, we're seeking authorization for half of the project. The whole project is 160000 We have an application into um, the DOT for a ship grant in the amount of $80,000. Um, so we actually will not borrow this money until we receive notification from the state if we receive that grant. And may I add, uh, this particular uh, bond and bond anticipation note should be open for at least a year, correct, to finish project. I was actually looking for uh, two, two years. years. So we so have we a maximum have of time. three years. So, okay. mm -hmm. Fourth project is the Water Street parking lot. This project is estimated $170,000. This would reconstruct the city parking lot on Water Street between the Elizabeth American and Eyes. Um, we're looking at paving um, the entire area and also having the business owners along those areas be able to pave their area and on a reimbursement basis. We have been working with the attorneys on that. Um, Similar to what we did on Store Street? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so we're removing well. the existing pavement, install drainage, prepare the base, repave and replace some of the light fixtures. Should note that this just includes the city portion of the project, the 170000 mm -hmm. for the private part the private pieces of the project. We're hoping to put an umbrella financing together, but it would be done through reimbursement from the private parties. The final project is uh, Alexis Way reconstruction uh, a few months ago. The residents of Deer Meadow subdivision had petitioned the city to accept their road, Alexis Way, as a city road. However, the road doesn't currently meet the standards for the city. <coughs> Uh, the city would borrow the money, and these owners will reimburse the city through a supplemental tax assessment. Um, they're estimating the project to be about $100,000, um, which includes engineering and attorney fees and the construction of the, the road. Um, residents are responsible when they sign the actual agreement with the city. They have to put a third of the project down. Um, so I'm requesting to for $80,000 to be authorized for this project thank you questions from council on <laughs> where the bond would go or any other Pretty seeing easy. none there is a public hearing required so I'll open yes, the public sir. hearing any input from the public on the bond issue bond request hmm. seeing none public hearings closed that answers that I have one question with finance director. Um, main bond bank, are you going private sale? Uh, actually looking at local banks. Local banks? Mm -hmm. Private though. Pri private. Yeah. Private, yes. Okay. As opposed to public sale. Public market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we've done in the past. Too small for a public right. sale. Any other questions? If not? Uh, just one. Uh, earlier, I think we had to figure $47 million that it that it's out. Um, what was, how's the schedule of, of finishing paying off some of those bonds going? How are they going to? Forty-seven million is citywide. The city's obligation, you say, is it's ten, million. ten million dollars. The rest of that is tied in with water, sewer, oh, school. They're school makes up health. like fifty-four percent of that forty-seven okay. million. Um, the city's percentage is about 21%, so the remaining is the water and wastewater. It's a shiny new sewage plant. Mm -hmm. Where's that thing maturing? Long after um, you and I are gone. Yeah. Well. There's one bond that's 30 years out. Mm. So I shouldn't be around for the closing party? Perhaps. Probably hey, not. A little mature by the next eclipse. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Yeah. Seeing no other comments or questions, how about a motion? 
Mr. Chairman, move to authorize the issuance of up to $1.18 million in city general obligation bonds to finance miscellaneous road and parking lot improvements and other capital projects, and also to authorize Council Order 081706 per the attached written order. Second. Questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Oh, Item 18, Council Order 081707, request of the City Manager to approve milling and paving of the westbound travel lane on Main Street from the vicinity of 156 Main Street to the lower lights at the intersection of Main, Water, and State. It is in such fine shape, I can't imagine why you'd want to do that. <laughs> well, it, it helps calm traffic, but... It surely uh, does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is one of those projects where we started out with the intention of trying to fix a few bumps in the road, so to speak. Yep. And uh, in conjunction with the Public Works Director, when we looked at it, it really didn't make sense to just mobilize, uh, to just do sections, rather do the entire westbound lane down to the intersection. Uh, we did get a price from lane construction under their current contract with the city based on current rates uh, and based on the volumes. Uh, they estimated that with night work, that would cost approximately $12,400 to do that work. Um, um, Director uh, Wilson noted that it may make sense to go further up, uh, up Main Street, more in the vicinity of the uh, intersection with Hancock Street. Uh, so uh, we're asking for up to fifteen thousand dollars it shouldn't cost that much but you know if we want to go a little further it makes sense to go further we'd like to have that latitude yep. um, just for the public so you're saying well why why one side of Main Street not the other this is the bumpy side of Main Street don't ask me why it just yeah, is terrible. and uh, the other side will need to be done but it can wait for the normal course of programming to be done in the next two or three yeah, years. That, that lane's miserable. Um, when are you projecting it done? Yeah, uh, I would defer to Director Wilson, but it sounds like it'll be uh, <laughs> around or after Labor Day. Um, Director Wilson? I'd say probably after Labor Day would be a wise choice, wouldn't you? Yeah. In I don't want to come back. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Yes, uh, it will be done after Labor Day. Okay. Good. It will be. Now, what year? <laughs> <laughs> That's a question. No, what we want to do is do it in conjunction with the mill in, in conjunction with Union Street. Yeah. So we can go in way early in the morning, do Main Street, jump up and do Union Street. Next day, jump back down in, in the morning early and pave, pave it. Main Street to get it done. All right. So uh, got bolt sometime in the middle of September right now. It would be left milled for a day, correct? Yeah, but the, on the end, they leave it all the time. Oh, no, no, they do this them. all the time yeah. on high speed roads. Yeah. It'll be fine. Well, yeah. they, they milled 1A and everywhere else. I mean, yeah. it's just yeah. an inch and a half milled. Yeah. It's but still going to no, be smooth. It's not but the delay be, that they had on with yeah. 1A. We have no. to wait three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. no. So it's done day after the middle of yeah. September is, is projected. That's what he's scheduling. Yeah. Perfect. Do. That's fine. But schedules change if it rains. Uh, Mr. Wilson. Would you uh, <coughs> care to speculate on what caused the ripple effect in I a couple areas? I probably could tell you what caused the ripple effect, in my opinion. Yeah. When we went up Main Street with the state, we laid a brand new water main over on that side, which is not in the bump, by the way. It's in close to the sidewalk. And the ground in that area had been dug up so many, many times over the years. It's all blue clay, gray clay, and everything else for a base, and they just put gravel over it without putting filter fabric down. So the first year Main Street started that ripple is because in front of J.B. Atlanta is because it's blue clay and, and gray clay there, and they didn't correct it Yeah, voids at the time. And they said it wasn't in their budget to lay filter yeah. fabric. So yeah. that okay. was... So poor sub-base. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Fortier. Yeah. I, I need to tell you, I was on Main Street this weekend, and one of the big transport flatbeds came down and hit that thing empty. Yeah. And it, it, it made babies cry. They were screaming and everything down there. And do you think any part of that is mm -hmm. 
the weight of the trucks and everything we've got coming down Main Street and breaking. The in rest traffic. of it all the way down Main Street probably is, but that bump in front of JB Atlantic came within probably eight months of it just got worse over the years. But it came within eight months of them building that road. Yep. yep. Okay. Thank did you. State build that or did we? Hmm? State. 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 State did they? Yeah. Well, they gave it to us. Will they, uh, They're real nice. Now. Will no. they give us any money? <laughs> Mr. No, Blanchett? Me. So Larry, me. while we have the uh, equipment jumping around from Main Street to Union Street, do you think perhaps it could jump around to this end of Hancock Street and put in a new apron right there? Uh, what, what, what's an apron uh, eight feet wide? The piece of equipment I'm talking about is a big milling machine. Okay. <laughs> they couldn't do just a little, they wouldn't be doing that. Can but we do something with it while, while they're repaving the westbound lane of Maine? I already looked in, um, I've got a price on doing Franklin and Hancock Street to overlay and pave it. But I haven't brought it to anybody yet because it okay. might scare you. Joe looking into it. You have now. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll Thank bring you. the price into Tammy. Very. Right. Thank you. She won't love me. Anything else for Mr. Wilson? If not, we'll move along. Motion, please. Mr. Chairman, move to authorize the increase in the city's pavement agreement with lane construction by up to $15,000 to an amount not to exceed $521,384.39 with the $15,000 to be funded through uncommitted funds under the local roads program. <coughs> Second. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Mr. Beatham, you'll be all right. It was only 15,000, it wasn't 150. Mm. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Unanimous. Good night from Main Street. <laughs> Thank you. Item 19, <laughs> Council 081708. Request of the Finance Director to withdraw up to $8,000 from the Moore Community Center Capital Reserve Account for repairs to the air handles on the roof of the Moore Community Center. Thank you. So during the past year, the air handlers at the Moore Community Center have been not been functioning properly and the building is unable to remain cool. Um, this is due to the air handlers tripping the system and it triggers an alarm. The maintenance supervisor at the Y would have to go to the roof and reset these alarms every single time they went off. Well, we found out after consulting with an outside HVAC contractor um, that the condenser fan motor of one unit and one exhaust fan on the other unit were broken, which continued to cause the failures and the uh, <laughs> malfunction of the circuits. We obtained three bids, and the lowest bid was for mechanical services at a cost of $6,675, and I'm requesting to withdraw those monies um, from a, an account that we put money aside that currently has a balance of $13,450. Um, back in July of 2016, um, I had asked the council to take some, uh, some leftover project funds and put them in a reserve fund, so that's where we, this money would be coming from. Good thing we did. Good thing you did. Put Question to the finance director. <laughs> a motion, please. Move to approve the request of the finance director to withdraw up to $6,675 from the Moore Community Center Capital Reserve account for the repairs to the air handlers on the roof of the Moore Community Center. <coughs> Second. Any discussion? Just one. Yes, um, sir. The published agenda says up to 8000 8, Are you satisfied with the sixty-six seventy-five? I am. At okay. the time we uh, published it, we didn't ha have an exact amount. Didn't have bids bid, the bids okay. came and the money's okay. an adequate supply. Thank you. The okay. highest bid we had received was like 8000 Okay, good. Bids are in. No other questions? All those in favor? I think that was unanimous. Council 081709, request of the human resource manager to purchase a Time Clock Plus version 7 professional edition and associated software from Time Clock Plus. Mm. I see. Ms. Moat, you'll be presenting tonight. We discussed this uh, a week or two ago at finance that was brought up. We've been discussing having a time clock for some time, and this is basically an electronic time clock, I assume? It is, and it will help to um, maintain better records and track time and job costing. Um, the software will enable us to do specific reporting um, that we're currently unable to do with the software that we have. Um, it will save department heads and the HR manager um, 
lots of time in processing payroll, and it'll be um, the ability to maintain vacation and sick time more efficiently. So currently, right now, we're we're tracking sick time and vacation time yep. on Excel. So, so, get, so this program, um, people will be able to log in and do an employee self-service type of software that should, they can check those balances. It should save employee time. So I think a lot of the things you were doing were, was actually done with a spreadsheet and, and handwritten or hand. Uh, and, and I entry. did want to add that um, we have monies available left over from the Munis project. We didn't use all of the funds that were authorized. So this is actual money that we have um, remaining in a capital improvement account. Just an example, right now for time off, you, you fill out a handwritten sheet. It goes for, to the supervisor, comes down to Penny, goes to me, goes to HR, and this can all be done electronically now without paper floating around. Any other questions? Mr. Batham? Uh, I believe it also adds a couple of items to the paycheck as far as totals concerned. Like leave balances? Yes, yep. it does. Okay. Yes, it does. And that's so the employee will know how this. Yes. Yeah. Exactly at all the time. Yeah, there it is. That. That's available. Mm -hmm. and, stood, and also will give us an electronic time stamp of, of employees, certain employee, or employees are on work <laughs> and off work in certain areas. This amount includes the software as well as some terminals at different locations, yep. so the highway department, water, wastewater. The rest of the, um, the departments, if they have an early employee, um, they can just log into the computer and we haven't decided who that's going to be but we're looking right now at the, the unions Good. Mm -hmm. motion please I move to approve the request of the human resource manager to purchase the hardware and software for implement for implementation of the time clock plus at a cost of eighteen thousand eight hundred and eighteen dollars and two cents to be funded from the Information Technology Capital Improvement Account, 9090900590053. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Council Road 081710 request to terminate the collective bargaining agreement between the City of Ellsworth and the Ellsworth Highway Unit 93 AFS, AFS CME AFL CIO that expired on June 30, 2017. Who might be? Thank you. Uh, so as discussed at the July Council meeting, the collective bargaining room between the City of Ellsworth and Ellsworth Highway Unit Council 93 AFSCME um, expired on June 30th, 2017. Um, the Highway Department employees have withdrawn from the AFSCME and are currently operating status quo under that contract. Um, we're looking to terminate that contract um, and then the next item will address their what they will have in place for <coughs> Yes. Questions from council? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Item 22, public hearing and action on the request to enact Chapter 11 of the City of Ellsworth Code of Ordinances, Chapter 34, Personnel Ordinance, titled Special Provisions Applicable to the Highway Department Employees. Now they are back again. Yeah. So now that the highway contract has been terminated, um, they need to continue to um, operate as status quo. Um, however, these employees have some additional um, negotiated benefits that are not accounted for in the city's personnel ordinance. So last month the council had directed um, staff to go back and to incorporate their union contract that they're going to be operating status quo into the city's current personnel ordinance. So that is what the HR manager has done and um, I believe that it, it, it is attached to the document. And I would add this has been done under advice of counsel. Yes. Yeah. Legal counsel. Mm Council I, I, I caught one thing in reading this. Um, I think it was the intention to keep them status quo and remove all references to the union and their rights under the union and all that. 
and did a real good job. The only one I caught was in Article 14, which is on page 6 of the new agreement or the personnel ordinance um, under retirement health savings. Excuse me, Council 48, what page are you on? 6, Article 14. Well, it says six on the bottom of that page that I'm just looking at. Hmm. It's, simp it's simple. You don't have to worry about okay. it. Um, it just says that the city shall contribute 2.5% of the employee's gross wages in year three of the contract. Oh. So we need to get rid of the reference. The year and, three. Yeah, the and, and or, or year three of the, or put a year in there. All right, because there um, is no contract. And, and I think that. Steve and I talked about earlier, I think in any motion we make tonight should include language that if there are other um, incidental, in incidental references that they staff is authorized to remove those. Errors and omissions. Right, right. You know, if it doesn't change the meaning or the material. intent, material changes, then uh, okay. should be able to because good. That's fine. Yep. Anything else? This required public hearing. We'll open the public hearing, public input it on the request to enact Chapter 11 of the Yells of the Cover Ordinances. Seeing none, that is taken care of. Public hearing closed. So, Mr. Forty, did you say you had a motion? Yeah, I'm trying to get back to it. His iPad sounds as fast as John. Proposed resolution is to enact Chapter 11 of the Personnel Ordinance Special Provisions applicable to Highway Department employees. In addition, that employees represented by Chapter 11 of the Personnel Ordinance receive any COLA increase approved by Council during the duration of this ordinance, including the 2% that was approved for the current fiscal year effective July 1, 2017. In addition, uh, staff is authorized to make um, incidental changes in wording that does not uh, change the intent of the personnel ordinance if more words have been left in referencing the union. Second. Second. Mr. Beatham. Um, I don't, does that mean it's going to be retro to July 1 or should it be included in as a pay raise in the next um, pay period? It's, it's a decision of the council. Mm -hmm. If the intent was to leave, keep them hold harmless. Um, and that's retro. I'd, I'd say seven weeks isn't going to hurt us, and it'll be good. Just so wanted to clarify that. Treat, treating our employees with respect. Yeah. They were held in limbo. Yeah. I don't know that decision needs to be made tonight. That could be brought back here. Not if, it's, if it's the council chooses to do the retro, then we'll need to have a couple weeks to prepare it. But right, and bring it back. If no. they approve it tonight, then okay. that would authorize that. I mean, the, the last in the printed motion, Mr. Chairman, is including the two percent that was approved for the current fiscal year effective mm -hmm. July one. So okay, so it I, is I would suggest that that means mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. retro to July yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. It's moved, and we had a second correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think reference should be made that it'll take. Uh, probably two to three weeks for the for the retro to show up, though. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're good with that. That's fine. Just all those in, and all those in favor of the motion, unanimous. Unanimous. Mm -hmm. Item twenty-three, executive session to discuss labor contracts in accordance with MRSA Title One, Chapter Thirteen, Section Four Hundred Five, Paragraph Six D. So moved. Second. All those in favor. Unanimous. Thank you. Action, action on the item from the executive session. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the contract between the City of Ellsworth and the local union 327 Ellsworth Wastewater Department plant unit and authorize the city manager to sign such documents. Second. Second. All those in favor? 
Unanimous. Item move, 25 move adjourned. adjourned. Second. All those in favor? Yep. We're out of here.